I'm a little tired. I was up pretty late last night trying to finish that last uh, edit and then this morning after it was all uploaded for some reason there was a Kanye sample in the video or the the song I used from SoundCloud some some artist sampled Kanye so it ended up working out just demonetized the video I, which is funny because I can't monetize any of my videos yet. I think today we're gonna go start by machining some more plastic parts. Well, let's do that. Doesn't it feel better in here without this huge stupid rack in the way? I've been really enjoying that. I ended up just throwing it back here for now, but you know, is what it is. I think this needs to get cleaned up and sweeping needs to happen. It is a mess. Ugh. Let's go get this running. It's our air filtration. Cleans the air out of this room. Ready, loud noises. Get out of here. Woo. All right, next we gotta clean this baby up. So I'm setting up these uh, plastic parts similar to what we were running the other day. Um, I just thought I'd go through a little bit of how we use patterns and especially mirroring has been super helpful. It's actually something I got from Karina at Autodesk. Um, I was hand selecting the way we need to chamfer all these holes. Uh, I was hand selecting them and that was super tedious. So you can see the one selection set I have here because we need a chamfer to run around the whole top and that means hand selecting them. That means a lot of potential for mistake uh, just by accidentally selecting one of these the wrong way. And then all of a sudden we've cut the outside way. So if you're trying to select 300 holes and you select the wrong thing, it's pretty easy just to miss one. So 75 in there. And then what we did in design is just do a mid plane and you do a mid plane between the sides of the part so obviously you need your parts to be centered and it creates the plane between two selections so do that twice for each way and then do one spaced evenly if you've aligned everything right between the two parts and now when we go to do chamfers I make one selection set I mirror that with a pattern and select this pattern. I mirror that again, put that nested inside of it, and mirror it the other way. And so what you get now with that simulation is you get the whole thing. And I only selected 75 out of 300, so we do this with a whole bunch of them, but in the case that these two are the same, which they are, I then did a linear pattern, copied all of those over from here to here, I actually didn't need that mirror plan. I could have used it to mirror across, but I did a linear pattern, same thing. Do a mirror, and have a mirror over that. And now all of them get a selection. So 600 holes for the price of 75. Pretty cool little feature. Um, thanks to Karina for helping me figure that out. It's super helpful, we use it all the time. This place is a mess. Uh, you know, one way to get things cleaned up is you just point a camera at it. It's kind of magic. And all of a sudden...
the last parts, I saw some strings and was checking out the end mill, and I really couldn't tell that anything was wrong. Threw it under the microscope, and what do you know? There was one little spot right near the, probably the top of the material, where you can't see it until I point it out here. See that little divot? That's probably enough to cause strings in our material, so this end has to go. Microscope already paying off. I just got out of the bathroom and I was wearing this lab mic and I was thinking, God, I hope I don't pull a Robert Durst. Kill them all, of course. Anyway, uh, just finished cleaning up from the last run and I feel so much better just having cleaned up a little bit in this space. Dust off the floor feels nice. Cleaned up this whole area that was a pretty big mess before. It's always... <laughs> vacuum compressor. Uh, but cleaned up this mess. Got the plywood that was like stacked up against the wall up here. I did have a nice idea here to open this up. We've always had the blue thing or something up against our workbench. That's been pretty annoying. Trying this out, it's pretty nice to walk through right here. It doesn't really change much. And also, it is nice to have the CNC cart closer to the CNC, which seems odd, but you kind of just want to be able to reach. Right, real quick. Just feels nice to have everything cleaned up and have a place to work again. Need to get some finish on this guy. And I think we're gonna do a Q&A now. Let's do a little Q&A. Um, I asked for some questions on Instagram. We got one guy that kept saying hi with a smiley face and I blocked him because he was annoying. So I got a few. The first one, Farzad Egbali. Uh, sorry, can't pronounce that. I, I tried. He asks, he, they asks, you use dry wood or dry the wood yourself? And yeah, we luckily live in an amazing place that in Portland here that we have plenty of wood suppliers. The trees come uh, fairly locally as far as, as far as my knowledge is of the stuff, not the plywood that we use, but it's hardwoods, a lot of it comes right nearby. So no, we don't dry any of the wood ourselves. We really don't have space for it. It takes, I don't even know the metric, something like a year per inch or something like that. That's probably wrong. We don't dry the wood ourselves, that's for sure. Made by Default asks, how do you choose the best finishing pass infusion to limit post-processing on wood carving? Oh, that's a tricky one. Um, I'd say trial and error, but what's cool about Fusion or any other suite of, of CAM is really you can see it before you go and do it. And a lot of times they'll give you an estimation. Um, Fusion's really good about giving you simulations that where things will look rough before you actually go do it. The situation usually for us, because it's not usually our project where we can just spend as much time as we want. Um, so we're charging clients for our time, for our expertise. We pick the best thing for the job and some of that's experience. <coughs> Excuse me, COVID. Sometimes it's just guessing and seeing how that works. And sometimes you gotta go try it on a test piece, but uh, use something like a big two inch ball. They're called cove cutters. The rule of thumb for 3D milling, the optimal amount of step over is 10% of the diameter. So that's a two inch diameter. And so every time it passes, say in a parallel pass, it just moves over 0.2. That's a long answer. R-E-Y-S-P-H-S asks, on the Pro 408, which spindle do you have? And is it more than enough for what you cut? That's an easy answer. So we have a five horsepower HSD. It's one of the standard options of the Shop Saber. We do run up against what we can do with it. We can only go, let's say 600 inches a minute in three quarter plywood with a three eighths bit uh, if you're doing a cutout. Whereas, you know, some of the people I know that have a 10 horsepower and the ISO model can do 1,000, 1,200. The new ISM can do somewhere in the 2,000 inches a minute. But I mean, unless you're just pumping sheets out all day long, um, that's probably not gonna help you that much. So I don't remember what the price difference was, thousands of dollars to get the 10 horsepower and really we haven't really needed it. So if somebody handed it to me, I would definitely take a 10 horsepower, but I don't know. It's gonna be an interesting question when this one 
um, has an unfortunate demise. John Domandrich asks, what's your next home project? <laughs> My wife would love to know, right? Um, let me go get it. So this has been a long time coming. It's a side table, a floating side table. This is hard to do backwards and across the room, but this is the side you'll see from over here. It's a floating side table. This is uh, ash. Um, I CNC'd all four sides, designed it in Fusion. It has a black metal front. Um, yeah, these were these are supposed to be done by now, but we're getting to that, right? So this one's pretty dang near ready to finish, and I just got to fit a fit a, a drawer in it, and then mount the front, and you know, things that are easy but seem hard right now. Yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. I mean, I've got a list of things. So I'm gonna organize a closet, but. We did want to renovate our kitchen and I was going to make all the cabinets and that's on hold currently. One more question. Uh, Dan Pacific asks, ramp into cutting, plywood, or plunge and go. It says plung, but I know he means plunge. I like plung, that's a good word. Um, we almost always ramp. There's very few times when I feel like it's necessary or smart or it just, it just, to me, ramping is always the solution because it really takes almost no more time. Um, it doesn't put undue stress on any part of the spindle or the assembly or the tool. Uh, wood is very soft regardless, so you're not gonna do a ton of damage, but I don't know, we ramp. That's pretty much the answer. Um, also, do your entry points with, with the grain of the wood. You won't get as much tear out, just a little tip. That's it, anyway. I figured I'd do these Q&As every once in a while. Um, ask for questions on Instagram if you follow us, PDXCNC. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're safe at home working on your fusion projects with a pantry full of toilet paper and Annie's mac and cheese. If you'd like to support these videos, head over to our Patreon at cnc.money. Same time tomorrow morning, 10.30 Pacific.